All right, hello everyone. So we are going to get started. It's almost 6.05, so we'll get started and then ask people if anyone joins in, I'll catch them up in a little bit. So for those of you who are new, welcome. And for those of you who were here last time, welcome back. It's nice to have some new names in here and some ones that we saw last time. So for today, I'm going to start sharing my screen with you guys. And I'm going to show you the game that we're going to do just before we actually start building it. That way it might help to kind of get things into perspective as to what we're going to be doing. So the way the game is going to work is that we're going to have a goalkeeper, a soccer player, and the soccer ball. When we click on the space bar on our keyboard, our key going to go and shoot. Now, if the ball hits the goalkeeper, we're going to be hearing that whistling noise. And then if I can get it in now. Oh, no. Okay. Let's try it again. And so if it does go in, then we're going to be hearing that sound effect that is cheering us on to let us know that the game, in fact, got the ball in. And as you can see, the goalkeeper is going side to side. And then the game is going to end by making a timer. So we're gonna learn how to make a timer today. And that's going to be what ends our game. So I want everyone to go ahead and open up a blank scratch page so that we can get started. I'll give you guys just a second to get that in. And in case anyone does not have the scratch link, I'm going to send it in the chat and then that way, if you guys don't have it open yet, you can just go onto the link that I'm going to send right now. Let's see here. It's just loading. <laughs> so also, um, I said this last time, but just in case you guys hear any barking or any loud noises, we have two dogs in this house um, and they're not always very quiet. So just giving that as a heads up. All right, so for those of you who don't have the link, then you can click on it on the Zoom chat. And for those of you who already have a Scratch account or have it downloaded, then you're gonna have it open. So the very first thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and delete the cat. So I'm gonna go off of this game as if some of you have not done Scratch before. So if you take a look at the page, on the left side is where all of our buttons are to actually drag the blocks and put them into this white page. And then on our right side is anything where we go to get new objects, change our background and get new characters. So the characters in Scratch are called sprites. So if you see down here, there's a box with a cat in it and it says sprite one. There's a trash can right above here. So just click on it to get rid of that cat. We are going to go in and add all of our characters first, set them up, and then we're going to go and put in the code. The reason for that is because we need to take into consideration the position of things in this game. So first, you're going to move your mouse all the way to the far right side. And at the bottom, there's a word that says stage. And then under it, it says backdrop one. If you click Lower down, there's a little kind of like a picture with a plus in it. If you click on that, it's going to take you to this like long option of backgrounds that you can pick from. For today, I'm going to get everyone to get the same background and the same characters, just because um, the position of the game will be easier to explain if we all have the same ones. But you are free to go back and change them afterwards. For now, I want everyone to scroll down until you find the background that says soccer. So make sure you pick soccer, not soccer two, because we're gonna be playing the game as if it's penalty shots. So once you find that background, you can click on it. And now we have our background. So next we need to actually go in and put three of our characters. So three sprites to do that. Right next to where we added a backdrop, if you move your mouse over to the left side a little bit, there's a cat with a plus on it. So this is where we can go and choose a sprite. So we're going to click on that. 
And let's get started by putting in our Ben character, who's going to be our soccer player. So if you scroll down a little bit, Ben is about on the third row. <clears throat> so for anyone who just joined, um, the backgrounds are going to be on the very far right side. At the bottom, there's a plus, there's a picture frame with a plus on it. If you click on that, in the search bar at the top, you can write soccer. And it's going to be the first one that looks like a penalty shot. So once people have our Ben, then we're going to go in back to our choose a sprite. And we're going to go and pick the soccer ball. So to do our soccer ball, you're going to scroll all the way down. I think it's about it's at the bottom part. Where is it? Here it is. So you can either search soccer ball or you can type it in or scroll down until we see the soccer ball and then click on it. Once you have your soccer ball, again, we're gonna go back to choose a sprite and scroll down until you find the goalie. So it's gonna be the hand and click on it. So I'm gonna give everyone a couple of seconds to get these four things in. So your background, your three sprites, and then we'll get started again. So I'm gonna write this in the chat as well for anyone who needs to catch up of what to do to get those objects. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys just a little bit more time and then we're gonna get started. And if anyone needs to see kind of a visual of that, if in the chat, I wrote down the general idea of what to get and where to get them from. So let's get started with our goalie. So for the goalie, if you see right now, it's pretty big, it kind of covers the entire screen and that's not what we really want because in this case, it would be way too easy to actually go through with it and you wouldn't be able to score. So it would be hard for us, even for the goalie. So what we want to do is if you see where we have our three sprites right now, where it says Ben, soccer ball, and goalie, right above that, there's a little white kind of box and one of them says size in them. So if anyone cannot find it, I'm going to circle this on my screen in red. You can take a look. What we're gonna do here is we are going to change that size from 100 down to 60. So click on 100, erase that and write 60. And now you can see that the goalie has shrunk and now it's at a better size because once you move it side to side, you'll be able to actually get it in. Now we're gonna put in the um, actual code for the goalie because the, goal, the code for the goalie is not affected by the other objects. So we don't need to worry about them too much. To do this, we're gonna go to our events in the yellow. For those of you who were here last time, if you remember, events are what trigger our code. So what it's what actually tells our code to get started. In this case for the goalie, we want the code to start when we click on our green flag. So you're gonna grab the very first block from our yellow blocks, the one that says when flag is clicked. That means when we click on our flag on the top right side, our code is gonna start running and it's gonna start doing what we ask it to do. Now, the first thing we need to do, and we're gonna do this for all three of our objects, is to tell them where to start. So that's called initializing it. That's because I don't want my goalie to accidentally start at the top. I don't want them to start on the left side. I want him to start right in the middle. So to do that, we're going to go to our motion blocks. So grab your goalie with your mouse on that right side screen where you can actually see the game and put it right in front so that the feet are right in front of that back white line. 
I'm going to give you the X and Y. How <clears throat> you make the goalie? Okay, to make the goalie smaller, do you see um, right under that game development area where you can see your game? If you look down, there's a place that says size 100. You want to erase that 100 and write 60. So as I was saying, um, we want to make sure our goalie starts in the middle. I'm going to give you X and Y positions that I'm using. They should technically be the same for everyone, but sometimes Scratch has different sizes on different computers. So if that does happen, just um, you can let me know in the chat if the size doesn't work for you and I will let you know what to do. For now, we're gonna go to our motion blocks in blue. So the very top ones. And we're gonna grab the one, two, three, four, the fifth block that says go to X and then there's a number, Y and then there's a number. In those numbers, we want our goalie to be in the middle of our page. So that's an X position. So X goes side to side. That's an X position of zero. So instead of whatever number you have next to the letter X in that white box, you're going to change that to a zero. That way it's gonna be right in the middle side to side. Now we also need to choose our Y position, which is up and down. We want it to be right in front of the goal. So that's gonna be an X, a Y position of minus 10. So it should say when flag is clicked, go to X zero, Y minus 10. Now, if you were to start your game, all this is gonna do is position your goalie right in the middle of your um, goal. I'm gonna give everyone just a second to put those two blocks in to catch up. And then we're gonna go in and put the code for the movement of our goalie. Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to go to the control blocks in orange. So to do that, the reason for that is we need to go and click on the repeat until loop that's at the bottom. The explanation for that is sometimes you want things to move, let's say 10 times, you want them to repeat 10 times. In this case, we don't know how many times exactly we want our goalie to move side to side. So in that case, what we need to do is to repeat it until something else tells it to stop. For those of you who just joined, I'm going to paste in the instructions that we gave earlier about um, setting up your background. And so yes, the block does say repeat until it's in your controls. It's lower down. It's in the middle bottom half of those orange control blocks. So I'm going to zoom in on my screen. So now it should say when flag is clicked, go to X zero Y minus 10 and repeat until. Inside of that until, what we want to do is to get our code to repeat until our time runs out. So when we say time runs out, it means our time has to be equal to zero. So to actually go ahead and make that variable, because right now we don't have any timer, we haven't created one yet. Let's go to the dark orange variable blocks at the bottom. So the before last circle and variables are things that hold information and that we can change. In this case, our timer is going to hold a number that is going to go down every one second. We'll put that code in later, but for now, click on make a variable and you're going to call it time or timer. And make sure where it says for all sprites or for this sprite only, you click on for all sprites so that we can access it from everywhere. So I'm gonna show that again one more time. You're going to go to the orange variable blocks in the dark orange. At the very top, there's this light like see-through box that says make a variable. When you click on it, it's going to give you like a pop-up and here's where we want to write our variable. So you can call it time or timer. And if anyone wants the spelling for that, it's T-I-M-E or T-I-M-E-R. So I'm 
give you guys just a second to put that in. And there's two, there's one thing that we're gonna use here. We just wanna grab that bubble. So if you see right now, we have two kind of oval bubbles, one that says my variable, the other one says time. We want to grab the one that says time and just put it to the side. We're gonna use it in just a second, but that way we don't have to come back to this code. Now, if you see that repeat until has this diamond shape, dark orange slot, but it's empty right now. So to fill it in, we're gonna go to our operators in green and you're gonna grab the block that says, um, it's gonna say there's gonna be a bubble that's empty equal 50. So that's the, let me count one, two. That's the eight block starting from the top. So if you count down eight blocks, it's the one with the equal sign. And I'll put that equal in the chat in case anyone's not too sure. Now, if you see our time bubble is an oval shape and there's an empty oval shape right here. So you're gonna grab that time bubble and put it into the first empty one. To make sure it goes into it, before you let go, you should see a white line around where you want to put that block in. That way we can make sure that it goes into the right slot. So right now it says repeat until time is equal to 50. But we don't want it, our time is going down. So we are gonna repeat until our time is equal to zero. So change that 50 to a zero. Give you guys just a second. Okay, so we are now inside of that repeat. We're gonna go and put in the movement. So when we say movement, that's motion. So you have to go to your blue motion blocks. And we're actually gonna use a block that says glide. So in our motion, there's two different glide buttons or uh, blocks. There's a glide one second to random position, and then there's a glide one second to a specific position. We are moving our goalie into a specific place. They're gonna move right and then left or left and then right. But if we told it random position, then it could go all over the screen, which we don't want that to happen. So what I want you guys to do is grab your goalie in case you don't have the same values as me. If you do, then you're going to, I'll tell you what numbers to put in. But just grab that goalie and move them to the far right side so that they're in the middle of the right hole. What that's going to do is it's going to change those numbers that we have inside of our glide block. So in motion, you're going to go and grab that glide one second to X a number and then Y a number and put that inside of your repeat until. So the next two blocks that I tell you about are all going inside of that repeat until. And I'll write the block in the chat just in case. The numbers that we're gonna go and put in here I will let you know the numbers and then if it doesn't work, just let me know and we'll fix them. What we're going to say is glide 1.5 seconds to X 106, so 106. And our Y position is really important here. It needs to be the same Y position as the one we started at. So if you take a look at the blocks we have so far, the second one we put in says y minus 10, which means in our glide, we want to change that to minus 10. So that's going to say glide 1.5 seconds to x 106, y minus 10. That number before seconds, where we put 1.5, that controls your speed. So if you were to make, want to make your game faster, you would put in a smaller number. So one or 0 0.5. If you want to make your game go slower, you would put in a bigger number. So two, 2.5, three, all the way up until however much you want to slow it down. Now, if you start your game, 
our goalie, well, right now we don't have a timer, so our game isn't going to start yet, but our goalie would only move to one side. We want it to go back to the other side. So grab that goalie and put it on the left side of your um, goal. And we're going to grab the same exact block. You're going to grab another glide one seconds to X and Y position. Put it under the first glide inside of that repeat until. So now you have the repeat until with two glide blocks inside of it. For those numbers, they're gonna be very similar. The only one we're gonna change is our X position because now he's on the left side instead of the right side. So we are going to tell it. So for the numbers, it's gonna be glide 1.5 seconds. Two, X is going to be minus 119. So minus 119. And then y is going to be the same as before, so minus 10. So I'm going to write that in again for anyone who wants it. OK, so the block is in the chat in case anyone misses it. Now let's go to our backdrop, and we'll actually put in our timer. That way we can see our code happening. So when I say let's go to our background, if you go and take your mouse all the way to the stage on the far right side, I'm going to say stage and then backdrops. We're going to click on that. And it's going to take you back to this empty page over here. And that's because if you remember, we code each object individually. So for our timer, we could put it anywhere. But the best place to put variables is usually in your background that way. It doesn't bother your other code and it's not too crowded. So in your backdrop, what we need to do here is let's go to events in the yellow. We want our timer to start when we click our flag. So we're going to grab that when flag clicked block and put it into your scripting area. So for those who need to get to the stage, if you remember, we were on our goalie sprite. So if you take your mouse all the way to the right side and bring it down right about where you had originally gone your backdrop from where there's that picture frame with a plus don't click on the picture frame but click on the actual like white strip on top of it and that will take you to the backdrop um, coding area we're going to go and code ben in the soccer ball in just a second when we finish our timer so here we have a when flag is clicked. So grab that first block from your events in the yellow. We need to tell it what to start at. So let's go down to our variables in the dark orange. And you're going to grab the very first rectangular block that says set my variable to zero. So grab that and attach it to the flag. And remember, when we tell it set, it's telling it what to start at or what to be. We're going to click on that little sentence where it says the little like drop down menu where it says my variable. And you want to select time or timer, depending on what you called it. Now, the number that we put in instead of the zero is going to be different for everyone. This is how long you want your game to last. When we try our code, I'm going to get you guys to put 30 seconds in just so that we don't wait longer than 30 seconds to try out the game. But when we finish the game, you can come back to this area. So remember, in your stage in the background and change the number to a bigger number if you want your game to last longer. Now, we need to make our timer go down. Otherwise, it's going to start at 30 and never come down. So still in this variables area, I'm going to get you guys to grab two things, but don't attach them. So remember, only put them in this blank page, but don't attach them to anything. You want to grab that time bubble, the same one we used in our goalie. So the bubble in oval that says time or timer, just put it to the side. And we're also going to grab the one that says change my variable by one. Again, make sure it doesn't attach to anything. Click on my variable, change that to time or timer. 
and change that number one to a minus one because our timer is going down and it's going down every second. So we need to put a negative number. All right, and I'll give you guys just a second. So once you have those two blocks in your scripting area, but not attached, we are gonna make our way back to our light orange control blocks. And here we need to repeat a code until something happens. So if you heard those two keywords, we need a repeat and an until. So you're gonna scroll down and grab the repeat until block. This one you can attach right under your set time to 30. So now it should say when flag is clicked, set time to 30 and repeat until. Again, we're gonna put in some blocks from here before we fill in everything. So for now, we're going to ignore that dark orange diamond shape. We'll come back to it in just a second. What we want to do is we need our timer to go down by one. The problem is if I only take this change time by minus one and put it in my repeat, my game is gonna lose the time super quickly because the game doesn't work per seconds. So we need to go ahead and tell it to wait one second before it changes. So in your control blocks, you're going to grab the very top one that says wait one second, put it inside your repeat until as if it's being sandwiched by that loop. And now you're gonna grab that change time by minus one that we brought in earlier and you can attach it under the wait one second inside of the repeat until. So I'm gonna repeat all of the code again. We're gonna say when flag is clicked, set time to 30, repeat until this part is empty, wait one second and change time by minus one. Now to fill in this until, we're going to go to operators and we need to grab that equal sign, just like before in the goalie where we told it to repeat until our time is equal to zero. So it's about, I think the eight block from the top, grab that equal sign. In the first bubble, you're going to grab that time orange bubble that we brought in earlier that wasn't attached and put it in the equal change that number 50 to a zero. So now it says repeat until time is equal to zero. But now if we actually think about it, once our timer runs out, we didn't tell it what to do. So we need to put in one more block that's actually gonna get our code to stop everything. You're gonna make your way back to the control blocks in orange, so the light orange. Scroll all the way down to the before last block that says stop all. You're going to grab that block and attach it all the way at the bottom. So outside your repeat until loop, all the way at the bottom. And so now if you click on your green flag, you might need to click on it once or twice for scratch to start your code. Your goalie should be moving left and right and you should have a timer on your um, game screen that is going down, starting at 30 and going down to zero. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of seconds in case you need to take a look at the code again. And then we're gonna go ahead and code our, um, we're gonna go ahead and code Ben first. But before we go and code Ben, we need to go to our soccer ball just to tell it where to start and to fix the size of it. Because the way that Ben is going to move is going to change based on our soccer ball. So in those sprites in the bottom, so on the bottom right where you have Ben, soccer ball, goalie, you wanna go ahead and click on soccer ball. Now, just like we changed um, the size for our goalie, we need to change the size for our soccer ball. So I'm gonna circle in where that is so that you guys can take a look. And we are going to change our soccer ball to 70. So seven, zero. Yes, so your goalie is going to move automatically. 
the only character that we as a player are going to um, control is going to be Ben, because we're going to control when Ben shoots, but we don't control how the goalie moves or how the ball is moving. We're going to code it to go automatically once we've kicked it. So once your ball is at size 70, if you guys take a look, there's that line right in front of the goalie. It's the shortest white line that we have. I want you guys to grab your ball and put it right on top of that line. So you should be hiding the line at this point with the ball. And so where that is, we're gonna leave it right there and then let's go to Ben. So what you're doing is change the size of the ball and place it in the middle. Now in Ben, same thing. We also need to shrink him just a little bit. He's not too big, but if we move him closer to the ball, he blocks off the goalie. So we can't really see it that much. So in Ben, again, in the size, we're going to change him to 85. So Ben's size is going to be 85. Now, Ben, we need to do a couple of things. One, we need to set his position of where to start because he's going to start on the left side and then go towards the ball. When he's at the ball, he needs to do two things. One, he needs to kick it, and we're going to do that by changing his costume. And two, he needs to then go back to his first where he was standing at first. We don't want him to stay where the ball is because we still want him to every time he kicks to run and um, kick on the ball. So to do that, let's go to our events. Again, we're gonna use that when flag is clicked because we want the code to start when we click on our flag. The only code we're putting for Ben under this flag clicked is the where to start, so his initial position. So if you remember the way we did it for our other two objects, we're going to go to motion, go down to that go to X and Y block and attach it under your flag is clicked. And I will let you guys know what numbers to put in here. So I'm gonna type them in the chat as well. So you're gonna tell him to go to X minus 138, so that's minus 138, and y minus 102, so minus 102. So I'll put this in, and if anyone didn't catch those numbers, I put them in the chat. So now if you click your green flag, Ben's gonna go to a specific position on the left side, and your goalie's moving. So now let's go in and actually put the kicking motion for um, our Ben character. We want Ben to kick when we press on our space key. For anyone who was here last week or who remembers, we used our arrows to control our movement from side to side. Last time we used an if then block. We told it, if you're clicking on your right arrow, then you're gonna move to the right. With Ben, we're not gonna be using those if-thens. Instead, we're gonna go to events in the yellow. And the second block says when space key pressed. So you're gonna grab that and put it anywhere else on your screen, just not attached to those first two blocks that you put in. The reason we can use this block instead of the if-then is because we don't need to be very specific with our space key pressing. It's okay if it lags for like 0 0.1 seconds. It's okay if it's not too specific and it's not as sensitive. So here it's gonna say when space key pressed, which means our code is gonna be triggered when we press on that space. Let's go back to our motion blocks and we need Ben to go towards the ball because he's obviously standing a little bit to the left of the ball and behind it. So we are gonna make him glide towards the ball. So to do that, we're going to grab that glide one second to X, Y position from your blue motion blocks. And I will give you guys those numbers again. So I'm gonna type them in the chat like before. So instead of that one second, we're gonna tell it 0 0.5 seconds. 
The reason for that is we don't want him to take too long and we want him to be relatively quick to get to the ball. So we're gonna tell it glide 0 0.5 seconds to X position is going to be minus 44 and Y position is going to be minus 93. Now, if you press your space and you see where he goes, he's moving super close to the ball, but he's not touching it quite yet. The reason for that is because he's gonna touch it when he actually moves his leg to go and kick. Otherwise, he wouldn't look like he's actually kicking and it's gonna be just like pushing the ball. So to do that, we are gonna go to our control blocks. And you guys don't have to go over here, but I will just show you where it is. In costumes, Ben has four different costumes. Um, one second. So the four costumes that he have, two of them look like he's kicking and two of them he's standing still. So we said two are kicking. So we're gonna grab that repeat 10 loop from your control blocks. And instead of the number 10, we're going to put two because we said that there's two costumes that he's going through. So here it should say when space key pressed, you're gonna glide to that specific position and then repeat two. So inside of that repeat two, we're first gonna go to looks and we don't care exactly what costume he goes to. We just want him to go to the next one because he's gonna go through those two kicking ones. So I think the six block, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. The six block says next costume. You're going to grab that and put it inside of the repeat two block. So now it's going through our two costumes. The problem is if you go and kick right now, you can't see that kicking very well. He goes through it super, super quickly. So just like our timer, scratch does not operate per second. So we need to tell it to slow down a little bit. To do that, you're gonna go to your orange control blocks and grab the very first one that says, wait one second. And you want to put it inside of that repeat two loop under the next costume. So inside your repeat two, there's two blocks, a purple one that says next costume and an orange one that says wait. Instead of one second, one second would be super long for an animation. So instead of one second, you're going to write 0 0.1. And now if you went and you take a look, he's gonna look like he's kicking. Now he gets stuck in this standing up motion but we're going to tell him to kind of go through. So I'll give you guys just a second. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the code better on the Zoom screen. And so, so for those of you whose Ben is not moving, make sure you're taking a look at the Zoom screen and see what the code is doing. One, you wanna make sure that you are coding in the Ben sprite. So we have three sprites, right? We have three um, squares at the bottom, Ben, soccer ball, and goalie. You wanna make sure that the code that you're putting in right now is under Ben. So click on Ben, and then take a look at the screen that we put in, or you can scroll through the chat where we wrote in um, the different boxes that we put in. So outside of that repeat two, so any code we're putting in right now is outside of that repeat. We're gonna go to looks and you're going to grab the one that says switch costume to Ben D. So Ben dash D. For those of you who aren't too sure where those sprites are, I'm going to circle them in on my screen. So make sure you are taking a look at the Zoom screen and you see where those sprites are. And I'm gonna put an arrow to the one that you wanna be putting the code in right now. So after we tell Ben to switch his costume, he needs to go back to the initial position that he was in. So he needs to go back to that go-to that we put in earlier. 
So you have two options here. If you take a look at your Ben code, there's two different blocks kind of. So these are called scripts. There's the one that said, when flag is clicked, go to X minus 138, Y minus 102. And you want to duplicate that by clicking on the right. If you're not sure how to duplicate, go to your motion blocks and grab a go to X and Y block again. Um, someone said that Ben is still in position C. If they are, in that switch costume two that we put in, click on where it says Ben C and choose Ben D. I'm going to give you guys just a second to catch up with this one. So in that go to X, Y that you just grabbed in, you're going to put it under the switch costume to Bendy. And then change those numbers to X minus 138, Y minus 102. So I'm going to write those numbers in the chat again. For anyone whose Ben is not moving, um, for now, keep following along with what we're going to be putting in next, even if you're not, you don't have all the code or it's not working. What we will do is at the end, either you guys can stay around and ask questions and we'll go through each person. Or what you can do is when we send you the video, so this is going to be recorded, we'll send you the video and you can follow it along again to see if there's anything that went wrong. So now if you go ahead and you start, click on your flag, you click on your space and Ben kicks, you can see the kicking movement and then he goes back. If you want to get rid of a block, <coughs> let's say it's attached, you will remove it from the bottom and drag it to the very far left side on top of the other blocks and it will kind of make it disappear. So I'm gonna give everyone just a couple of seconds to try out their Ben code. And then we're gonna go do the soccer ball. Remember, if it's not working very well, what we'll do is at the end, you can ask questions or we'll send you this code so that you can take a look at it again. Um, if the position of Ben is not exactly right, there might be something wrong with the X and Y numbers that we used or that are different in each person's game. So those are something that we can fix easily at the end. For now, just to make sure we get our soccer ball code done, let's go and click on the soccer ball sprite and we'll put in the code over here. So what we need to do with the soccer ball is we need to be able to, um, when Ben actually touches the ball, so when he kicks it, the soccer ball needs to go upwards and move into the goal. To do that, let's go to our events in yellow. And all of this code, the code for the ball is sensitive. We said Ben's code is not sensitive, but the soccer ball's code is. So we are going to use an if then here. So let's put from events, grab your when flag is clicked. Remember, make sure you are in your soccer ball right now and not in Ben. We're gonna tell it when flag is clicked, we need to tell it where to start. So motion, grab the sixth block or the fifth block, sorry, go to X, Y. The numbers that we're going to put in here are going to be X is zero, so in the middle of your page, and Y is going to be minus 120. That just sets it right in the middle so that we make sure that Ben makes contact with it. So what we're going to do is let's go down to our orange control blocks. And what we need to do with if thens is to tell our game to constantly be checking if something is happening. When we say constantly, it means we need to put in a forever loop. So grab the third block and put it under your go to X and Y. So right now you should have three blocks in your soccer ball. Now, 
the code for this, there's a lot of parts that are going into each other. So again, in case you miss anything, don't worry too much, follow along with the rest, and then you can go back and fix it. Inside of the forever, you're going to grab the fourth block that says if then and put it inside. So everything that we're about to put in right now is going to go inside of that if then. The very first thing we need to check is if the ball is touching then. So anything to do with objects colliding with each other or touching a specific color or an object is in sensing. So that's the light blue blocks right under your control blocks. We're going to click on that and grab the very first one that says touching mouse pointer. Again, if you take a look at the shape, this is kind of like a diamond shape and next to the if there's a dark orange diamond shape. So put those into each other so that it says if touching mouse pointer then. Now, remember we said we want to check if it's touching then. So where it says mouse pointer, click on that on the little arrow and then go and click on the word then. So while we're here, I'm going to get you guys to grab another block, but we're not going to attach it just yet. What we're going to grab is that touching mouse pointer block again. Put it on the side of your code, don't attach it, and change mouse pointer to goalie. And I'll explain why we're going to do that in just a second. We'll come back to this. Let's go back to our controls. And there's a couple things that we need to do here. So if the ball touches Ben, what we need to do is we need to tell it to go all the way up. So it needs to change its Y, but it only needs to change its Y until it reaches the goal. We don't want it to go all the way up into the crowd. We don't want it to go like behind our crowd. We wanna make sure it stops. To do that, we're gonna be using a repeat until. So in your orange control blocks, scroll down to the bottom and grab that repeat until block. Remember everything now is going inside of that if then. So you're gonna have if touching Ben, then repeat until. In that until, we're gonna have to put a couple of things here. So bear with me. Let's go to operators in the green. And we need to check two things. One, if our ball is above our, like the midpoint of our game, which is gonna be a Y of 25. Or the other time we need our ball to stop moving is if it hits the goalie, because we don't want it to hit the goalie and then keep going up. The goalie blocks it, the ball needs to come back towards Ben. So in our operators, if you look about the middle, there's a block that says and, a block that says or, and a block that says not. We want to grab the one that says or and put it inside of that until. So it says repeat until blank or blank. Now, in one of those blocks, you can put in your touching goalie that we grabbed earlier, that light blue block that we put to the side. Doesn't matter if you put it in the first one or in the second one up to you. And then still in the operators, you're going to grab the block that says bigger than. So I'm going to write it in the chat of what it looks like, but it's that triangle that is open. That's the open part is towards the blank circle. We are going to put in a scoring very, very soon. So in just a second. So grab that bigger than block. Don't put it in anywhere yet because we need to make two of it. So grab it twice, have them on top of each other. Don't attach them to anything just yet. So now that you have them, so I'm gonna just count and tell you what block number that is. One, two, three, four, five. So it's the sixth block from the top. Let's go to our motion blocks and scroll down all the way to the bottom until you see X position, Y position, and direction in those circle ovals. 
we want to check the Y position. Remember, Y is up and down. So we wanna see how high our ball is. So grab that Y position bubble and put it in both of those empty bubbles. So you have two bigger thens right now that say Y position bigger than, 20, than 50. Once you have that in, change those number to 25. So I'm gonna write this in the chat just in case, because I know there's a lot of blocks integrating. So, so I'll give you guys a second to put it in. Okay, you're going to grab one of those and put it in your other dark green diamond in that repeat until, so that it says repeat until touching goalie or Y position is bigger than 25. And don't worry about the other one, we're gonna use it in just a second and we're gonna do our score very, very soon. Here, still in your motion blocks, now is how we're gonna make our ball go up. So, from where you had those Y position bubbles, go up just a little, and there's a block that says change Y by 10. Now, the code that we're putting is inside our repeat until, so make sure it's inside that blank spot. You're gonna grab that change Y by 10 and put it inside of the repeat until. Now, if you start your game and you go ahead and shoot, for those of you who can shoot it, um, the ball goes up, but once it reaches either the goalie or when it goes above that position of 25, it's not coming back towards us. And we also are not getting any scores. So we'll do the score first, and then we'll go and put in the ball to come back to you. To put a score, we need to check if the Y position of our ball is bigger than 25. So this is why we made that second Y position bigger than 25. So let's go to our control and you're going to grab an if then again. Don't put it in anywhere yet, don't attach it. We're gonna fill it in and then we will grab it and move it upwards. In that orange, um, diamond shape, you're going to grab the Y position bigger than 25 block that we made earlier. So that green and blue block and put it inside of your if uh, block. So if the ball isn't moving properly for anyone, it might be because Ben is not moving properly. So don't worry about it. We'll do it in just a second when we check everyone's. So that if then now says if Y position is bigger than 25, this is where we need to change our score. Let's go to our variables at the very bottom, the dark orange variables, and grab the block that says change my variable by one and put it inside of that if then. So that it says, if your Y position is bigger than 25, then change my variable by one. Now, remember we made a times variable, but we haven't made a score variable yet. So still in your variables, at the very top where it says make a variable, click on that and let's write score. So I'll spell that out for you guys and I'll write it in the chat. So S C O R E. And then you're gonna press okay. So now we have that second variable for us. Where it says change my variable by one, click on my variable and then click on score. So now it should say change score by one. Give you guys just one second to do that. And then after that, we only have two more blocks to put in and then we're almost all done. Three more blocks, sorry. So now what you're gonna do is grab that if then and you want to put it 
right under your change y by 10. So grab that if then and put it under your change y by 10 so that it's attached to it. Make sure it's not outside of that, repeat until. Now, before we test it out, we're gonna go and put in the movement to make the ball come back. Um, I know someone says that it's not changing scores yet. Now, if you give it a try, it should work. Beforehand, it wasn't integrated, so it, shouldn't, it wouldn't have worked earlier. So to make it go backwards, we're gonna go to our control blocks. Grab that weight one second before you put it in anywhere. Look at the very bottom of your code. There are four orange lines. You want to grab that weight one second block, put it right in the middle so that there's two orange lines above it and two orange lines under it. So remember, you have four orange lines all the way at the bottom. The weight one second block needs to go in the middle so that there's two orange blocks above it and two orange blocks under it. So now we're gonna change that one to 0 0.05. So I know it's 7 p.m. since we started a little bit late, I'm gonna just finish up the code. If anyone needs to get going, um, don't worry about that. We will send you an email with the video for this so that you can go back and follow it and we will send you the code for it so that you can click around in Scratch and actually see the code and put the rest of it in. We're almost done. I think there's two more blocks left and then we're all done with it. And then we'll, I'll take questions from anyone. So you want it to say, wait 0 0.05 seconds. The very, very last block we're putting inside of this super big loop, we're gonna go to our motion blocks in the blue and grab the block that says go to X and Y. And this is because we need to make our ball come back all the way to that initial position where it was at. Attach that go to directly under your weight once, uh, weight 0 0.05 seconds, they should be touching. And we are going to tell it to go to X zero and y minus 120. So x0, y minus 120. Now the very, very, very last thing we're gonna put in here. Our score is not going back to zero if we start our game now. To do that, we're going to go to our variables in the dark orange, grab the second rectangular block that says change my variable by one. Click on my variable and pick score. Oh, sorry, not change. Um, grab the set my variable. Sorry about that. Grab set my variable to zero. Change my variable to score so that it says set score to zero. Don't attach it to anything quite yet. Go to your yellow event blocks. And you're going to grab the when flag clicked attach it right on top. So I'm going to write it in the chat what it should say at the end. So when flag is clicked, set score to zero. So now I'm going to make mine on the it in. So now I'm gonna make it big screen so you guys can see what the game looks like. But this is the time you guys can go ahead and put your um, questions in the chat. I'll go through them. We'll see what we can answer right now or what could be answered when we send you in the video. So you should be able to shoot now. The ball goes towards either the goalie or it goes into the goal. If it goes into the goal, your score goes up. If it hits the goalie, the ball stops and it comes back towards you. Now, the very last thing I'm gonna show you guys is just how to save. At the very top, change the name of your game. Go to the far left top side where it says file and click on save now. So when someone's, okay, score will not change. 
So if your score is not changing, I want you guys to take a look at the code that I have right now. Um, because I cannot see your screens, it's a little bit hard to make sure that where exactly your code went wrong. So take a look at the soccer ball code on Zoom right now and just look at where those blocks are. If what's happening is your score is not going up, um, check that um, the block that says change my variable by one, make sure that you change the word my variable to score. And that should kind of help it to make sure that it's changing your score. Again, if it's not working, what we'll do is once we send you this code, you can take a look at it. If it's still not working, you can email us and we'll take a look at it. That way I can actually see what your code is versus now it's a little hard when I cannot see it exactly. You want to click on the flag, it will not. Okay, so if you are clicking on the flag and your score is not going back to zero, make sure that you have where the block that says set score to zero, make sure you have a when flag is clicked, set score to zero. So those should be attached to each other. How did you get? Okay, so I'll go and go at, take a look at Ben for a second. For Ben, the code where you have when space key pressed, and then we have our glide, we have a repeat to switch costume to Ben D. Right under your switch costume to Ben D, you want to go to motion and grab a go to X, Y block. And for the person who asked that question, I will specifically send you the coordinates just so I don't put it in the chat and it gets crowded. But I will send you the numbers to make to put into your um, go to X, Y block. So you want to attach that at the very end of your um, of that when space key pressed code. Um, for those of you who are okay with the game or are okay following along later at home, you are free to go um, unless you have questions that you want me to take a look at now. Okay, so yeah, so for someone said that Ben is staying, Ben's foot is staying out there and he kicks it, make sure that Ben is going back to his position. So make sure you have a go to X, Y outside of that when space key pressed. So I have the code up on the screen. You can take a look at it if you need to put in some changes. Okay, someone said Ben is only moving up a little. So if Ben is only moving up a little bit, what's potentially happening is that the X and Y positions are not working exactly. So to do that, to make sure that it's working a little bit better, Instead of putting in the numbers that I have put in, grab your Ben and move him super close to the ball. He doesn't have to be touching it quite yet, but just super, super close to the ball. Take a look at those new X and Y positions. I'm gonna highlight on the screen where that would be, but that would be on the, on the right side. It says X and Y, it gives you numbers. Replace your glide 0 0.5 seconds block with a new one that has those new X and Y coordinates. If that doesn't work, um, let us know or we can take a look at your code later. Um, you want to get it in? The score is not going up. Okay, so if the score is not going up, that has something to do with your if then positions and if then. Um, so for that, I would suggest just wait for when the video comes out and we'll send it to you just because, again, I can't see your code, right? So it's super hard for me to tell you exactly what's going on because I'm not sure where that mistake or what happened is going, uh, is, is put in. Thank you. What's the score? Ben is going back in two seconds. So if Ben is taking... For someone who said Ben is going in two seconds, is it that Ben is taking a long time to go back to the position or Ben is taking two seconds to do what? Okay. Score is not going up. Okay, for anyone who score is not going up, that is something that we'll send you the code to. Again, just because 
it's a super big code, so I can't exactly tell you what's going on. Um, but as a general thing for your score, it should be in the soccer ball. Go ahead and take a look. You have a forever loop. Inside of it, it says if touching Ben, then repeat until Y position is bigger than 25 or touching goalie. Inside of that, you have it change Y by 10. Again, inside of that, you have if the Y position is bigger than 25, then change score by one. Under that, you're gonna have two orange lines. After that, you have a wait 0 0.05 seconds. Go to X zero Y minus 128. So take a look again. Okay, so if the ball is not moving, can you double check that when you click it, that Ben is actually coming in contact with the ball? Because if he's not close enough to coming in contact with the ball, then it's not going to work. But the code for the ball is over here. So I'm gonna be able to stay on for just five more minutes. Again, if someone's code is not working, specifically the ball's movement, just wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be able to send you the recording of this so you can take a look at it again and we will show you the exact code. If anyone has any other questions, you can send them in. Just save it. At the very top left, it says file. Click on the word file, and you can either, if you are on Scratch with a Scratch account, you can click on save now. If you are not on a Scratch account, then you can save to your computer. That way it downloads into your computer. Okay, so does anyone have any general questions um, that we can answer without any like scare screen sharing? Um, and if not, then we'll send you the link. But if not, then we can close the Zoom. No, okay. It seems like there's no questions left. Again, we will send you the recording in the game tomorrow. Um, but otherwise, thank you for coming and we hope to see you next week. So we'll do the same thing next week with a different game. All right, so have a good day or evening. <laughs> Bye.